let's do question six. Question six says uh, solve the simultaneous equation. Okay, so we're supposed to solve the simultaneous equation. So if you've been watching these videos, you probably know that I advise you, first of all, you try elimination method. Normally, it is the fastest to compute, uh, you know, all the values for the simultaneous equation. And then if you can't, you try substitution method. There are some instances where substitution method is more convenient, but then always try elimination and then you can try substitution if necessary. And uh, the third one to try is um, it'd be matrix, matrix method. Okay. And then the fourth one, obviously, it's a, graph, a graphical analysis. And normally what they do is they don't tell you to use one specific, uh, you know, method. So unless it's stated, just use elimination method. It usually computes the answer the fastest. So in elimination method, what we have to do is we have to match uh, the coefficients either for x or for y. So make sure that uh, your equation, each equation is it's written in this fashion, such that the x, they kind of are in the uh, same vertical plane, and then the y is same vertical plane, and then the numbers on their own. And then after you do that, you find, you determine which ones to match. So it can be the coefficients of x or it can be the coefficients of y. For our case, let's match the coefficients of x. Why? Because we just have to multiply this one by 2. So we just have to multiply this one by 2. And this one we just have to multiply it by, by 1. So this one remains the same. And the reason we didn't choose this one is that to actually match this, you have to multiply this one by 5 and you have to multiply this one by 3. So it's kind of um, a, compl a more complicated uh, process. So let's just do uh, what we get is 2x plus 3y equal to 28. Okay, so for this one what we get is 2x plus 10y equal to 70. Okay, and then now we have made now that we have matched uh, the the x ones, you just have to uh, figure out are the signs the same. If the signs are the same, then we should subtract to eliminate. If the signs are different, you add. So the by signs, I mean the signs for the part where you want to remove. So you want to remove x here. So it's it's got to be two x minus two x, then you get zero. Then this minus this, you get uh, negative seven y. Okay, and then this minus this, what do you get? You can just say 70 minus 28. Uh, it's 2 here, and then here it's uh, got to be 3. Then you get like 42. So you get negative 42 in this case. So in case in case you missed it, uh, here, if you say 28 minus 70, the bigger size the number, when you're ignoring the signs, it's 70. So we take the sign of uh, the bigger size number, which is in this case negative. So we put negative. Then we just say 70 minus 28. Then we get 42. Then afterwards, we just um, divide both sides by 7. Divide both sides by 7. What do you get? You get y equal to uh, equal to 6. Okay, like this. So we are supposed to divide by negative 7. So such that we cancel all this. So we get y equal to equal to 6. And that's it. And uh, remember, this, this are simultaneous equations. So you have to also get the value of x. And the value of x, I advise you, choose the equation which which gives you the, which computes the answer the fastest. So it'd be the second one, just because here we have x already uh, on its own. So 35, and then x plus 5 times 6 equal to 35. Then x equal to 35 minus 5 times 6, is the, which is 30. Okay, so we get 5. So here x equal to, equal to 5, like this. And then you're done. You can conclude that, uh, therefore, x equal to 5 or y equal to 6 if you want. But then, with this, you're done. So let's move to question 7. Question 7 says 2y plus 5 divided by 3y minus 2 equal to 9 by 4. So what you do here is we cross multiply. So this one goes there, this one goes there. We do this because we want to eliminate uh, our fractions. So here the 4 goes there and then we have to use brackets for the whole thing. Okay. 
don't forget to use brackets for the whole thing. Four will be multiplying uh, the the other side. And I will, I'll show you right now. I'll show you the the quickest way that you can compute this. This one will be nine three uh, y minus two. Okay, like this, and then you just solve. But if you you want to do it in a in a systemic way, this is how you do it. Okay, if you actually know what's what's really happening. So you have two y plus five divided by 3y minus 2 equal to 9 over 4 like this so you have to multiply by the lowest common multiple of the uh, denominators for case it before 3y minus 2 like this so multiply by 4 3y minus 2 this is the basis for cross multiplication so here uh, 4 cancels with 4 and then we end up getting 4 2y plus 5 equal to 9, 3y minus 2, okay, so it's the same as cross multiplying, so that's where the cross multiplication comes from, in case you don't like uh, cramming, so this one would be 27y minus 18, and then here it would be 27 minus uh, 27y minus 8y, we are moving this so that we avoid uh, negatives, okay, uh, this one would be 20 plus 18. So this one is going to, to the side, so we get 38 here, and then here you get 19, 19y. Then you divide both sides by 19 by 19. Therefore, y equal to, so here, here we get 2. So y equal to 2. This is how you uh, you'd solve the equation. And then that's it, that's done. Let's move on to question 8. Uh, let's do question 8. So question 8 says 1 by b plus 1 by a equal to 3 and we asked to make a the subject of the formula. Okay, this one is 3. So what do we do? We multiply by the lowest common multiple for 3, the 3 over 1. So the lowest common multiple of the denominators, this is a, this is b, this is 1. So the lowest common, the lowest common multiple would be, would be a, b. Okay, so you're going to multiply by a, b here, you're going to multiply by a, b here, you're going to multiply by a b here okay so here uh, b cancels and then you just get a plus here a cancels and you just get b equal to 3 a b like this so a minus 3 a b uh, if you want you can put uh, 3 a b to to the side or you can just avoid the the negatives and then put uh, 3 a b to the other side so here would be negative b and here we factor out a, so we get uh, negative uh, 3b here. So it's a into a, we get 1, a into negative 3ab, we get negative 3b, okay, go to negative b. And um, now we divide both sides to get rid of, uh, so that we are left with only a, we have to get rid of the 1 by 1 minus 3b. So we get rid of it by dividing. So you actually get a equal to negative b divided by 1 by uh, 1, 1 minus 3b like this. So this would be your answer. And just so you know, this is not the only answer that you, you get. You can also get a different answer. A different answer would be a equal to b over uh, 3b minus 1. So this is also acceptable. It just depends on how you shift. So you know, in this case, in the in our case, we shifted uh, the then the 3ab we shifted it to the other side okay if we had shifted this one to this side then we would have gotten uh the, this one here so this and this they are the same uh they just uh if you multiply this by negative one over negative if you multiply it by negative one over negative one so you'd get the you get this one so just just remember that sometimes in uh change of subject or formula you can actually get uh depending on how you work out the math you have two possible values that, that you can get sometimes not, not in all cases so let's especially in fractions so let's quickly move on to uh question question nine what does question nine say okay so the when baking scones a baker mixes six cups of flour one cup of sugar two cups of milk and half half two cups of water and half cup of milk to, uh, okay together with the other with other with other ingredients so we're given this given the ratio for these ingredients okay we express the quantities of flour sugar milk and uh, sugar water and milk 
as a ratio in its simplest form. So what I'm going to do here is to say to just use some placeholders, okay? We want to express for flour is to sugar is to water is to milk, like this. So what do we get? For flour we had um, six. For sugar we had uh, one cup, so six is to one. For water we had um, two cups of water. And then for milk we had uh, half cup, okay. So here we're supposed to um, write in the simplest form. Simplest form means there won't be any fractions. So what we do is we have to make sure that throughout this, it's just numbers, but then we have this half. So to get rid of the half, you have to multiply by two, but then to maintain the, the ratio, you have to multiply throughout by two. So each and every entity. So this one would be multiplied by two, this one will be multiplied by two, this one will be multiplied by two, this one will be multiplied by two. So you actually get 12 is 2, um, this would be 2 is 2, 4 is 2, 1, like this, okay. So this is, this is what you'd, uh, you, you'd get, and this is your, your part A answer. And part B, what does it say? We might actually need some space, okay, we just use the, the space on the, uh, this, this blank space here. So calculate the number of cups needed if uh, the baker uses four cups of flour, okay, so we want to calculate the number of cups of water needed. So here we have to identify the the ratio for the uh, ratio for water and and flour. So water to flour, so water to flour ratio is equal to what? Water is the third one, so it's four. Is two, is to twelve like this. So if you want, you can use this in uh, just as a, a simple ratio. So four cups, water is to 12 cups of flour. So 12 cups, flour. So 12 cups of flour. And then we want uh, the corresponding number of cup, number number of cups of water. Four, four cups of flour, okay. So four cups, flour would be what? Using simple proportion. It would obviously be less. And if it's less, we know that it's smaller number um, at the top. So you get four divided by 12, multiply by, by four. So here you start canceling stuff. So um, four into four on into this, you get three. So we actually get four over three cups of of water, so which is equal to one and one third like this, and then you're done. And then uh, the, this this part I just put it here, but also included. Okay, don't put it aside or anything. If you, you use a rough paper, make sure that you attach it so that there's no confusion. But you um you get one and a, and a, and a third uh, cups of of water. That's that's what you need. Okay, let's quickly move to question 10. So question 10 says the probability that Sittler will bring a calculator is 5 over 6. Why the probability that Yamurai will bring, bring a calculator is 3 over 5. Given that the, uh, given the answer, giving, giving the answer is a fraction in its lowest and simplest, in its simplest form, find the probability that A, Sittler will not bring a calculator for the lesson, okay? So here, um, just in probability notation, what we have is probability that Sittler brings the calculator. If you want, you can actually define this. Uh, let the probability that Sittler brings the calculator be, then PS equal to given as five over six, okay? But they know that this is conventional uh, probability notation, so usually the examiner knows. And then for, for MRI, it's, um, it's three over five. Like this. Then after you download this now, uh, part A says, what's the probability that Sittler will not bring a calculator? So probability that Sittler will not bring a calculator would be Sittler complement like this. So it'd be equal to one minus probability that Sittler will bring a calculator. So this would be equal to one minus five over six. So therefore the probability equal to what? 1 over 6, like this. And then you're done, okay? If you want your probability that 
not bring a calculator it's equal to one minus the probability of bringing a calculator okay and then it was for six layer. that's why we used our five over six here so the b part says what's the probability that only one of them will bring a calculator for the lesson now these events they happen at the same time either Sitler will bring a calculator and Yamurai will not or Yamurai will bring a calculator and Sitler will not so whenever you see uh, those events happening at the, at the same time um, we use the end rule okay the end rule means uh, there is multiplication somehow so you have to have a sense of imagination of how that would play out so the required probability it's equal to probability that Sitler bring a calculator but if Sitler bring a calculator then yeah is not supposed to bring a calculator okay so it'd be r complement plus probability that yara brings a calculator but then at the same time sitla will not bring a calculator okay so these two probabilities are the two ways by which we would fulfill or would fulfill this um this requirement that only one of them brings a calculator okay and you can see that we use the multiplication here the dot means uh, the multiplication just because they, these events are happening at the same time. Sitla is bringing a calculator and Yara is, Yara is, Yamura is not bringing a calculator, okay? So Sitla will bring a calculator that's uh, 5 over 6. Then Yara will um, not bring a calculator that's three over, uh, three over, 1 minus 3 over 5. So if you want, you can even write 1 minus 3 over 5 just for clarity. And then this one is 3 over 5. And then this one will be 1 minus 5 over 6 like this. So you'd actually get 5 over 6 here, then here you'd get uh, 2 over 3, no, no, it's 3 over 5, 2 over 5, I mean. So here you'd get uh, 2 over 5, like this, and then here you get 3 over 5, as it is, and then here you get 1 over 6, like this. So you just start uh, cancelling stuff. So here, uh, you get 3 here, then here, here, so you simply get one third. And uh, here you get one here, here you get two. So what you get is one third plus this one is five, remember. So plus one over ten. Okay. So one third plus one over ten here it be you can uh, multiply this by, by ten over ten, so you get ten over thirty plus three over thirty. Okay. So here, uh, 10 plus plus 3, what do you get? You get 13 over 30, like this. And then you're done. So your answer is equal to 13 over 30. That's your probability. And then just make sure that your probability is less than 1, of course. You just use a guideline. So here what we did was uh, we identified the probability that Sitla brings a calculator and that Yamurai will not bring a calculator. Yet by 2 over, 2 over 5. And then we simplified here. It was... Uh, um you get one here we got three so we got one third okay and then the how it would play out it play out in two ways one of them so siltab this time brings a calculator yamurai this time brings a calculator so for our case uh, yamurai's case it was 3 over 5 here it was uh 1 minus 5 over 6 which is uh probably that siltab brings a calculator so here we get 1 over 6 as the probability that siltab will not bring a calculator okay just like what we calculated previously and then we multiplied here we got uh, 1 over 10 then we added the 2 and we got uh, 13 over 30 and then that's your ultimate probability so i'll catch you in the next video where we are going to continue from question 11. so make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss uh, any of these videos uh, we usually upload two videos uh, for for two papers we if you guys want uh, there's a paper that you want make sure that uh, you know you just tell us in the comment section and then we'll I'll find that paper and then we'll uh, do it for you. So cheers for now. Make sure you like, share and subscribe. Yubo, I'm out.